welcome to Digging Deeper with Backyard Farmer. I'm your host, Kim Todd. On Digging Deeper, we have in-depth discussions with extension and industry experts about all those important landscape topics. Tonight, we are talking about Lincoln's sunken gardens with very special guests, Alice Reed and Steve Nozzle. Alice and Steve, you are as iconic as the gardens themselves. <laughs> Thank you, you have been in charge of this space for, do, you, do we dare tell people how many years? 40 years? 45 for me. For 45 for him and uh, almost 38 for me. So, so decades and decades of. It's been a long time. The bra and the brains creating the beauty, right? Right. So let's talk about the history of it real briefly and where you've headed with it and what has changed over the years. Well, I guess in a nutshell, it was created in 1930 for the purposes of making the people of Lincoln feel good during the Depression. Mm -hmm. And when we picked up on that back in the 60s and 70s and continued that idea, let's make Lincoln a better, brighter, happier, colorful, artful place, I think that's what helped push it along for both of us. And so that's a little bit of the, the history. Well, and we have some pictures on the screen of what it looked like. What it was. And, and so it was actually close to like this when you, well, the, what did it really look like when you got the, started? The original, the original garden that you're looking at right now was basically a perennial garden. It had over 400 and some odd trees and shrubs and roses in it. Wow. And it had native plants and of course, all of us that work in sunken gardens know it's a hole in the ground and it is <laughs> hot and humid. Mm -hmm. And so for the most part, a lot of the plants didn't make it. And then during the floods of, I think it was the 1950s and 60s before Holmes Dam was put in, mm -hmm. it killed all the plant material in it. That's when they switched over to annuals. And um, we actually met the original designer of the garden a couple of times. I interviewed him, uh, his name is Henry Goebel. And he and his father designed it. And uh, I asked him, I said, do you mind that we have filled it full of annuals? And he goes, no. He said, think of the alternative. I think he was referring to the fact that it's just a hole in the ground, fill mm -hmm. it up. And so mm -hmm. we were given permission to do whatever we saw fit. So, so having been given permission, how go through the process of how you, how you decide because I know every year you have a theme, and this year it is Ruby Slippers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wizard of Oz happens to be my, probably one of my absolute favorite It's movies. been a good year for sure. Yeah. And uh, every year is, is different. We try to change it up to be good farmers. We want to change our plants and their locations, try to move them around a little bit so they're not all sitting in the same place. Mm -hmm. So we've always moved things, uh, but one year we in particular, uh, it was way back, we just decided to ad lib. <laughs> and uh, we had all the plants there and we just laid it out and then suddenly it showed up on the state map uh, on the outside. So we thought, oh, well, we're on to something here and people like this and they like to like the look of it. And so every year we would try to one up it a little bit more, try to get it better and better. and. Uh, you know, we've had some mistakes. We've had some bad years, <laughs> bad bugs or whatever will get plants. But um, we've had, for the most part, very successful plantings that uh, we like to pick a theme. So it sort of centers us and makes us think of color themes that we could mm -hmm. show and represent. And people really love that. They like to pick out those special designs. So. so the plants themselves, how many? And I know you used to contract grow them. Are you growing them yourselves? Now? Yeah, yes, yeah. absolutely. Our staff, Alice runs the greenhouse, well, Zach and Mike are in on that too, but mm -hmm. we have a bunch of horticulturists growing these things. And so we're not limited to a tiny little plant like you find in the big box store. So when Alice produces or crew produces them, they're full size when nice they go in the ground. ground. Mm -hmm. And that is so a better way to do it. Mm -hmm. It works out a lot better. Yeah, it's nicer to be able to control uh, the outcome. You know, mm -hmm. when we want a larger plant, because we have to plant in May, right. which is fairly late, you want to have an instant, uh, you know, bang for the buck. Mm -hmm. right. And so when we can grow it in a four by four 
pod mm -hmm. and have a very developed root system and they're ready to grow, um, ready to go and just as what we want. You know, sometimes we would get things from the contractors and they, for the most part, did a good job. But we, uh, you know, we would want big hefty root systems, not a lot of bloom and, uh, you know, very specific and so it's nice to be able to have a little control. So, so you mentioned both the roots and the shoots, mm -hmm. and, and I think it's very, very difficult for people who purchase annuals, or even perennials for that matter, mm -hmm. but mostly annuals, to pinch off those flowers yeah. when they bring them home. So yeah. talk a little bit about the soil and the management of this space so that you really can keep those plants beautiful. The, the soil in the greenhouse is... Mm -hmm. The soil in the garden. The soil mm -hmm. in the garden is a special Betty Crocker mix that Alice and I cooked <laughs> up about 25 years ago. It has uh, all the ingredients of what we think a plant needs. And of course, research is still developing mm -hmm. in that field. So we have rotted leaves. We have old compost in it. We have horse magic we, we make, because the bacteria of that really makes it work. Mm -hmm. We have uh, grass clippings if we can get them in there and uh, it blends and it sits for two years and then we put it on every fall. So it's a two year old compost pile that we put on it. So it's a mix of bacteria and fungi. And of course, for those of us that are in the field, we know that those are the elements that actually bring the nitrogen or excuse me, the nutrients out of the atmosphere and help feed them to the plants. So, and you can actually tell in some of the newer gardens that we put in that have not had compost and they're just sort of sitting there, you can actually see the compost kick in. All of a sudden mm -hmm. the plants just take off. That's wonderful. A lot of lot, we've had a lot of success with it. Mm -hmm. We've played around and made a lot of mistakes, but mm -hmm. uh, I think we've learned a few things yep. here and there. So. Come up with your formula for it. Good formula. Yeah, well, and, and so you start the plants in the greenhouse, you mm -hmm. grow them on until you're pleased with them. You also have a lot of very large, very tropical plants that, yes. that seem to be sort of a, a, a staple in sunken Correct. gardens. Yes. Where are you overwintering those? Or Big are tropicals, you? yes. Yeah. We overwinter, so our banana trees, mm -hmm. the cannas, some of the big grasses, mm -hmm. all of our cal uh, alocasia, calocasia, elephant ears, mm -hmm. Thai giants, all those that if you had to purchase those each year, a banana tree for an average would be about 15 to 30 bucks. Mm -hmm. And um, not nearly as big as yours. And not nearly as big. And right. so we propagate our plants. Uh, all our guys that we've got have been to the university. They've had plant propagation. And we pride ourselves in dividing. Mm -hmm. And we'll have propagation. We're going to see if we can make me a hundred of these. and. Mm -hmm. uh, will our designs will be done at that point? So we'll know, for instance, whether we need, you know, 45 big red uh, Abyssinian Ensete bananas, mm -hmm. and so we'll make those during the winter. Yeah. Um, as same with the elephant ears and the varieties that we have. Mm -hmm. um, so that's really great because we feel like we recycle quite a bit. Uh, it's it's not as hard as it looks. The big bananas can be pretty, you know, 20 feet tall, and we just take a machete out, cut them down, and and uh, basically throw them in a pot mm -hmm. and let them sit in our greenhouse just dormant through the winter. In about January, February, things start to, we start to check our bulbs, and we'll go in and uh, propagate, divide, and start making our plans for, you know, our mist bench, what we're going to propagate. So that's it's a lot of fun, and it's a, a a group effort for sure. Of course, a little camaraderie going yes. on in the plant world. Yeah, we is. we should mention at, the, at this point, since you talked about bananas and, and elephant ears and all that, that our climate, the microclimate in sunken gardens, is very close to that of Belize, and <laughs> so. It's, it, we have a friend from Belize that worked for us for a while. It's just like home, same color, <laughs> same plants, yeah. but the humidity, the lack sure. of wind, and the mm -hmm. it, 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 it seems to, these plants thrive in those. That's why they're so darn big. They're like yeah, twice sure. as big as they're supposed to be. Yeah, and, interesting. Uh, Who would ever think that we could say, you know, Belize is our sister place to yeah. Lincoln, Nebraska, And, right? you know, it's interesting within six months, you know, we've got a full-grown 
jungle, basically, and it's it's just a lot of fun for people. Gives them, you know, peace and comfort, and they just love love the look of it. Exactly. We want to make sure that you follow us on Facebook and you send us all of your great questions and all your comments. If we are not talking about what you want to hear about, you need to tell us what you want to hear about so that we can dig deeper on some other subject and, of course, get back to Sunken Gardens because there's no way that we are going to get through everything we want to talk about tonight. Yeah, there's a lot of plants. <laughs> people have to do what? Come visit. Yes. Have to come visit. Come and visit. Mm -hmm. So, ballpark, how many plants <clears throat> go in the ground in a given spring? In the, an the annuals, we put about 30,000 in. And what's amazing is we will do in, on Wake Up the Beds, the volunteer event, we'll put in probably at least a third of those. So we'll lay them out from 6 to 7.30 in the morning and between 9.30 and 10 they're installed. I've mm -hmm. never seen anything so fast in my entire life. I think one of the film clips you had showed them putting it in. It's just mm -hmm. like, boom, it's in. Mm -hmm. yeah. and then they come back all summer long and go, I did this. Did yeah. that. It's that great yeah. sense of satisfaction yeah. that mm -hmm. people have with people it. People look forward to it and take a little ownership in their section. Right. Um, and they come back throughout the year and bring their family and look around and say, oh, I planted this section. It, it's a form of pride, and we, we think that's great. Yeah. We just love that. Well, and then you you put them to sleep mm -hmm. in the fall, and that typically happens. Do you wait for first frost, cross your fingers, and hope it's a late frost instead of an yeah, early one? Yeah, pretty or? much we've already let things, uh, we'll let things frost. Sign of frost will start to remove centerpiece plants and things that we really need for sure. We right. don't want them to, to go by the wayside, and so we'll start to dig those early. Mm -hmm. To try to slip them out before anybody notices, uh, but then we'll bring in our group, and generally our plants are cleaned up because we have to get ready for uh, tulips to go in. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and so the the volunteers come in, and we get about a hundred people spading and dancing on shovels and <laughs> having a good old time, and we play lots of music and mm -hmm. shovel to the blues and have uh, some fun with it, mm -hmm. and then they add the compost on. Oh, perfect. And that's been great because then they can see in, uh, we've put the beds to bed. Exactly. a nice little coating. Well, you know, and I don't think people also realize when they're in the space that a part of what makes it work is, yes, it is in a bowl, mm -hmm. but you also have a backdrop and a canopy that is some trees, some yep. shrubs, yep. a perennial component, Yes. the grasses that you allow, I think, to stand mm -hmm. for most of the winter. Yes. Um, seeding, you know, the, the ponds, mm -hmm. which of course fascinate everyone who sees all those fish the that fish. want to eat Boy. whatever they're yeah. not supposed yeah. to be. Yes, the magic fish. The magic fish. Exactly. Yes, it's quite a draw down there for sure. It is. And it's a there's lovely garden. A lot of species, of different species of trees. and mm -hmm. We have some very rare species that have been given to us by different growers that go, here, try it, see if you can grow it in Lincoln. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. and, and then, of course, we have the rose gardens and the new bicentennial fountain garden. So it's right. surrounded by gardens. And then, there, of course, there's the children's zoo close by. So right. So, and of nice. course, I take my students at least two, two classes oh, yeah. every single year. And here we come and yeah. we it's good and, and mm -hmm. learn those kinds Immediate, of things. Yeah. Yeah. You have a lot of events scheduled for sunken gardens. Mm -hmm. Art in the garden, yes. you have, I don't know how many weddings. What, what has happened over the years as your space has become more popular? It, 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 what's happened that we talk about a lot is that the garden is a little bit too small for what happens. There. <laughs> and we're only hoping I, that yeah. we someday get a bigger expanse for people to use, something we're, of course, we're hoping for a botanical garden in Lincoln, which mm -hmm. I believe someday will happen. Conservatory botanical. Someday. Mm -hmm. So it, we are, we're, our community is becoming a garden mecca. I mean, mm -hmm. it's everywhere. And of course, what you guys do with Backyard Farmer, think mm -hmm. of the, the, the response you get. You have so many people wanting to know. And right. That's or, cool. Or just, or just to be in, as you mentioned. You know, it's, they're certainly not going to do 30,000 annuals at home. Mm-hmm. And then to know that it changes every single year, yeah. And to be able to say, "Gosh, I, you know, I want that 
Yes. Mind? Or or could I do that? Oh yeah. We so, have, you, so you brought a bucket. Do you I want brought to a talk bucket. Talk about some of them. Well, I just brought a little potpourri, so so to speak, uh, of different things that we've used yeah. this year. You know, this year. So some of the most asked about plants were are in this bunch here. The dahlias. We featured a lot of dahlias this year, mm -hmm. which were really beautiful. And I saw we, some dinner plates. Yeah. We had I? some dinner yeah. plate ones even and. Uh, those are fun for us to try new things because mm -hmm. Lincoln is, we need to grow. Steve and I travel a lot. We go around all over to different gardens to see what, what people are featuring all over. Of course, we've been out to Seattle too. And of course, dahlias are really big there, but we had two different varieties of vet dahlias that are making a great show. You know, the gomfrina, strawberry fields, everybody said, what are those things down there that people want to know what the stuff is? Right the cosmos, the castor beans, and all of these fun uh, foliage caladiums. Uh, in people, the shade. They love that yeah. stuff. Yeah. And, uh, well, and then you've got we have coleus. Like coleus on it. Okay, so this coleus. year, this year, this one is called, a uh, variety called apple brandy. Mm -hmm. um, but we featured a lot of these varieties called Wicked Witch. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were hot, hot, wicked. Everything was sort of, it seemed like it came together for the... So uh, you needed a Glenda. We, we have Glenda's stars and her yeah. wand in the garden. And so it's fun for us to, uh, you know, look at these beautiful plants and put combinations together and see what looks good together. Mm -hmm. A lot of our trial and error are when we'll put things in a pot and see how they look together and if we go whoa that really is striking well why not utilize that out in the garden well you also have the big containers that mm -hmm. that are sort of the don't drive on the sidewalk right <laughs> but they also are you know sort of the entry point for anybody you who bet. works in the small the bollards garden. yes the bollards yes exactly but uh, really people as. are really getting into planters i think oh, yeah. um just because the the ease of putting them mm -hmm. and changing them out making them seasonal Mm -hmm. I think that's fun for people. Mm -hmm. uh, downtown, you see a lot of new planters, and I think that that makes the city look really great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We were out in Fort Collins not long ago, and they have up to 20 or 30 planters per intersection. Oh, my goodness. Just in each intersection, yeah. because it's easy to put it into a, a planter or so, uh, soil conditions aren't as troublesome. Exactly, and then Most you just have to hope you somebody will walk And it. move them around and oh, yeah. uh, yeah, change them out. But Full crew of people watering in, in et cetera. Yeah. yeah. It's, but it's fun to have variety, I think. Right. Uh, and see new plants. It's exciting for people. So so our uh, viewers, of course, you won't be able to see read this, but this is the plant list mm -hmm. for this year with a little history on the back. And this sits in the beautiful little pavilion that has the great roof. Right. And, yes. and the restrooms for anybody mm -hmm. who... Yep. needs to do that mm -hmm. and most of these are labeled somewhere if you can find the label and if uh, like our garden if the label actually matches the plant luckily yeah uh, we have uh, interns map. from the university and they follow maps but also they they're required to learn their plants and so if you can ask anybody down in the garden they'll they'll tell you a name of a plant which is perfect um, we switch things out a lot and so it's just mm -hmm. it's new for everybody mm -hmm. but uh, there's definitely we'll get certain plants that they'll ask over and over again, what is that? You know, and they get it memorized then, but. Which is, again, I mean, what better way to learn than yeah. you hear the same question over and over yeah. again. And then you know you've done a fabulous job of yeah. picking your theme, picking your plants. Mm -hmm. So I, we only have a few seconds. Are you gonna give us a little hint on when you're gonna start picking your theme for 2020? Oh, we've already been. Oh, We've I changed mean, it yeah. twice already, right? <laughs> well, it's, it's, it goes through a metamorphosis of some sort. And, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, we're getting closer and closer. We have to have our plants uh, ordered, our seeds and plants need to go into our uh, broker, basically, that we order um, and get in our liner stock. And that has to be done by September. So Which we're would be a week from that's now. That's in a couple of weeks, and so <laughs> we're sort of on a fast track. But we've sort of been looking, you know, going through the looking glass, mm. and uh, you know, experiencing tea parties. What a fun and uh, fun 
events down in the garden. So perhaps the Mad Hatter Pepper is going to perhaps show. Perhaps it could be, yes. So it could be a, a real Alice in Wonderland thing, you know. So We're to not speak, real sure. Alice. So to speak. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well that is all the time we have for Digging Deeper with Backyard Farmer. We do want to say thanks so much to Steve and Alice for coming in and talking to us today. Thanks we will be back next time with another in-depth discussion. Do be sure to watch Backyard Farmer live every Thursday at 7 p.m. Central on Nebraska Public Media. Thanks for digging deeper with Backyard Farmer.